Greetings and salutations. My name is Torden, and this is Advanced Voxelmancy 203, Changing Planes in Mid-Flight. Before we get started today, I'm going to answer a couple of frequently asked questions. The first one is, why do you make this 000 rather than the starting point of the vertex? And the answer is that depending on the uh, project that I'm working on or the wedge that I might be using. Um, I actually think about the numbers in different ways, but uh, for ease of simplicity for these tutorials, I'm going to be consistent in calling this 000 and this 888 because for the 1 8th wedge, it's very easy to simply say go to the 873 um, and then you go 8 this way, 7 this way, 3 up, and you're there. So. Um, but it's somewhat arbitrary and mathematically, computer-oriented wise, it actually makes more sense to call this 000. But then I'd be happy to say, okay, negative five this direction, etc., cetera. Um, and that becomes cumbersome. So again, for the sake of uh, simplicity for using these videos, the center will be 000 and the far corner will be 888. The second question I get a lot of is, when are you going to show how you use this stuff to make something? And the answer is in 204. We will use the tools that we've come up with so far to make a uh, simple uh, nose to a fuselage for a spacecraft or something. Um, and the next question I get a lot is when are you going to do circles and curves and arches? And the answer to that is that will be the topic of the entire 300 series, keeping in mind that there are no curves in voxel space. There are simply polygons that approach curves. But today, what we're going to talk about is what happens when you change planes along a slope. So the first thing I'm going to do is talk a little bit more about this um, reactor wedge and how it's oriented. So you notice that at the corner here it stops, and if I want to go further up, there's nothing here, but it does go this way. Well, it's completely symmetrical, so going this way is the same as going up, only it's just you know, flipped and rotated going this way, all right? And that's true throughout this whole wedge. For any given point that you want, you can find it along some axis and just change the axes, and you've got it right. Um, however, if you've got lots of materials and you've got lots of space, you can simply modify your wedge um, and leave it that way. So for today, I can do this. If I copy this here, and then we'll go over here to the wall. If I flip it using the R key and then rotate it, using hold down R and spin the mouse wheel to the point where you see that the black corner of my bottom voxel there, which is the corner one, right, is in the same orientation. And then come over here and bring it in. And then go up. Uh, let's see, there we go. All right, so you see that this looks exactly like th the same. It's shimmering there because I've got two different colors, all right? But the point is in the same place as it should be because it's symmetrical. And now where our reactor actually has the vertical extension in that direction. And if I had, like I said, if I had lots of space and, and materials, I can just leave it that way so I have it for later if I want. Um, so what I can do now is grab this on and what I'm going to actually do is go up to my corner and then um, go one past it because um, actually let's go two past it all right um, and what I want to do here is make a tower that goes from uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to make a slope that's one eighth of a voxel thick so that we can demonstrate something else so first I'm going to invert this so that we sort of have below. And then let's invert it back again and go up to here. Now, this is our center. So our center is the same, you know, it's the center, right? Um, so I'm going to go down to let our center line up. All right. So now what I have from the center, I have going up to two past the edge and two below the edge. And then what I'm going to do is cheat and do a whole bunch of flats all at once. So I'm going to copy this, just this one corner, 
which is the corner that's furthest away from the center. All right. And this time both up and down. And then we're going to go ahead and rotate it, go up twice and shift click here, rotate it again, go up twice and shift click in this corner and rotate it again and go up twice and shift click in this corner. Try not to miss. Do that again. All right. So now we have a bunch of flats. All right. And and they're at different heights, starting with below the center, going up through the center, and going up to above the center. All right. And now what we want to do is combine some of these so that we have um, multi-height. I'm going to go ahead and select this entire tower, place it next to it and up. Go ahead and delete all of the centers. And then delete all of the tops. Which is a touch cumbersome, but needs to get done. So we're going to go ahead and delete all of the tops, leaving just the bottom of each of these reactors. Now, of course, once you've done one of these tasks, like, for instance, creating these flats right here, um, you can set that aside, keep it as part of your library, and you will have all of the flats in one eighth increments, which will be useful for doing all sorts of things. What we're going to do now is create not quite flats, but one eighth thick flats. Because it's going to make it much easier to visualize what it is we're looking at. All right. So this one is here at the bottom, right? And I'm going to skip that one and go up to the top. And raise this up. And then place that. So now what you see I've done is I've created one eighth thick flats. All right. And we have the center and the other side of center, etc. All right. Now, if I take the one right here, and we'll go ahead and go down and go over a couple, just set it in the air there, and then grab the one below it, go down and over, right? You see how it's like this, right? If I click here, well, then the two vertices go up to meet it. So that's good. That's what I want. So I'm going to go ahead and do that again. That gets us to the next one and do that again. And that gets us to the next one and do that again. Let's see. There. All right. And if I copy this and here, I can invert this, go down. And you see here, they are, we can line them up. All right. So now what we have is, it's a one eighth slope, but there's only seven voxels. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven voxels, right? And this corner is at the bottom corner of our voxel, and this one is at the top corner of our voxel. All right. But what happens when we go the next one? All right. So if we go down, if we go, let's go up, right? Um, actually, 
Let's grab this one right here. No, oh, one more. That's the one that's flush. All right. So if I grab the, the next one down here, you see what's happened is that we've switched planes, right? We, are, we have now offset into the next plane. If I'm here to here, this is the plane that I'm working on. This one offsets down into the next plane. All right. So what does that mean, though? If I take this to here, we bring it over to this wall. And let's back it away from the wall. I'm just using this wall as a reference point. All right. You see that what we've done is we've gone from the edge right here, from the top of one voxel down to right and into the next plane what if i want to have so that's my eight voxels right what happens if i go here and i line up this one right to here all right see what it just did it doesn't line up so that why you ask why did it not line up well this voxel right here all right let's go ahead and grab a color and color this voxel so i'm going to go ahead and make this one blue all right. So the blue voxel and the yellow and the orange voxel are on different planes. All right. The blue voxel is actually this voxel right here. And the orange one is this voxel right here. Well, if you look at those two voxels, which corners are shared? In this particular case, it's the top of this voxel and the bottom of this one which is why it's forcing these two corners to go down. Those other two vertices are below here because it's this lower voxel. So how do you solve this problem? All right. And the answer is you use this voxel. All right. If I have this voxel right here and I place it right there, all right, you see that what it did, of course, is it's touching over here and it's touching over here. And how is it touching here? Well, it's touching here one quarter of a voxel below, right? That's where this bottom corner is. And so what I want to do is take this top and go here. So one of the other questions I get is how do you fix something sticking out in a weird direction? So something like this can happen when you're building where you've switched planes from one plane to the next and you've got a voxel here. These two corners aren't attached to something, right? They're not part of this slope. They're sort of free floating, but I want them to look like they're down here. All right. So if I take this out and we'll go up and place it in the air and let's place a reactor around it. All right. So we have six corners that are in the right place, but the red and the orange corners are in the wrong place. We want them to be down here where pink and light, or, you know, it's, it's light orange, light red and light orange are. All right. Um, well, conveniently, we have that. We pull it out over here. All right. We're going to go up to, um, so, so this is our bottom edge right here. All right. And we went down one quarter, so it's right here. So it's actually these two red reactors corners right here. So if we come over here and go ahead and shift paste those in there and force that down. So now we have a reactor that's in the right place. And I can go ahead and grab this, come over here 
replace this by shift clicking. All right, ignore the bug that happened there. That is actually a bug. Let's go ahead and we'll actually copy this. Undo. Go out a couple. And let's grab this. Place that. And you see we've got a working version. But to do it, I had to use the plane above, which is the black voxel, and the plane below, which is the orange voxel. And you can see here how we've switched planes. This slope right here is in the upper plane, and then it switches to the lower plane and continues down. The downside of this, of course, is that anything else that might be um, moving along, or if there's a pillar coming down, you know, this is not the place you want to put your pillar, right? I mean, you can do it, but it becomes somewhat more problematic if it's not a flat. I mean, if it's if it's a prime space, right, it's going to work like this. Um, but it definitely will be convoluted if you're trying to extrude, um, as we did in the last video, something down to meet this, because this voxel right here is, in fact, this one already, and so you've already extruded uh, and offset something down into this space from right here, and you can't extrude or offset something else again into that same space without causing some distortions. So you need to be aware of where that transition from plane to A to plane B is. All right. So hopefully that was uh, clear and understandable. And like I said, in Advanced Voxelmancy 204, we will take all of this and uh, make the beginnings of a fuselage uh, nose. All right. Uh, talk to you all later.